Well, again, good morning and welcome to this week's life insurance webinar from the Messer Financial Group out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Today we're going to feature Transamerica and our feature speaker is going to be Doug Bedore, who's the virtual sales director with Transamerica. Just before we get started, a couple of little housekeeping items. Uh, make sure that your phone is on mute and also uh, if you have questions during the presentation, uh, please type them into the question box on the side panel. You'll also see information on getting contracted if you're not yet appointed with the company so that you'll be able to bring in some activity. And also we'll ask that you please stay with us until the very end as we'll review the benefits of the presentation this morning as well as present you, present you with the bonus opportunity that will be made available to the participants only on this webinar. With that all in mind, again, good morning, Doug, and welcome. Thank you very much, Mark, and thank you, everyone, for uh, joining us this morning. Again, Doug Bedore here with Transamerica. I am a virtual sales director. I've been with the company just uh, about 12 years now. And uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about Transamerica's term portfolio. Um, so we're going to kind of jump right in, talk a little bit about the term products we offer and some of the extra benefits that we really have on our term. Um, so on the screen here, you'll kind of see, it, we kind of make it simple here. We really just have two different products that we offer in the term arena. Uh, the first being the Trendsetter Super, the second being the Trendsetter LB. Um, and the way you kind of want to think about these is the Trendsetter Super is kind of kind of be your, your standard term that you're used to, really a kind of a, a vanilla, straightforward term giving you death benefit coverage. The Trendsetter LB, the LB there stands for Living Benefits, is going to have some extended benefits that we're offering the client um, on that product. So we're going to talk a little bit about the differences between these two products. I'm going to touch a little bit on our Trendsetter Super, um, but it is a pretty straightforward product. And then we're going to spend a little bit of time going into our Trendsetter LB and, and get a little bit more detail there. So just kind of give you kind of some of the highlights or top points here of really what is uh, um, similar between the two products, between the LB, is they both are available in 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30 year durations. Um, so we kind of have that covered across the board. Um, we do offer this product uh, for, for younger clients, but also older clients as well. For example, our 10 year term can be offered up to a, an 80 year old client. Um, so we do have kind of a wide range of clients that can be offered. Um, with the Trendsetter Super, now looking kind of at the top one, our Trendsetter Super, we do have a yearly renewable option. So if you're looking for a, a, a term that is um, going to be inexpensive in the beginning and, and maybe goes up in price, uh, we have that option there. Um, really, our Trendsetter Super Series is intended to be the co most cost-effective term option. We've competitively priced it really for all durations and risk class. So. Um, if you're running a, a quote on uh, you know, a third-party quoting engine that's showing you a, a bunch of different uh, carriers there, you'll probably see our Trendsetter Super pop up here and there. Um, the Trendsetter LB, though, we're going to kind of talk about that a little more in depth, um, and it's going to build in some extra features to the term series. So uh, again, uh, both of these products do have some non-medical underwriting coverage amounts, and we're going to look at those in a second. Um, with the Trendsetter LB, we actually go up a little bit higher in terms of non-med. Um, our LB does have a limit on the top end. We can do it up to a $2 million policy. And we're going to get into a, a bunch more detail about this, but really the benefit of the LB product is giving the client some chronic, critical, and terminal illness coverage built into that product. So we're going to jump right in here. Um, I mentioned before that both products have spots where we can write these uh, as a non-medical underwriting. And when I say non-medical underwriting, we're avoiding the paramed going out, no blood or urine samples taken. So it's just going to be basically based on the information that's written on the application. We're, we're basing our underwriting decision. So non-medical takes place on the super under 100,000. On the Trendsetter LB, it's under 250,000. So Really on this chart, anywhere in gold is, is where we start that non-medical. Now there are some age requirements uh, for clients age 60 and younger. Uh, we have this non-medical available. For clients age 61 and above, uh, it would be a full under, fully underwritten product. And really anyone that's applying for coverage amounts in those gray sections, so not in the gold sections, in the gray sections, um, is going to be considered a fully underwritten product as well. So um, 
really with the trend start OB, it gives us a, a lot of leeway uh, if you're looking to get a client a policy fast, a client that maybe doesn't want to go through those uh, additional underwriting and medical requirements. Uh, going up to uh, $249,000 is uh, certainly uh, an advantageous uh, spot for that product, and we, we see a lot of sales in that, uh, that spot as well. So um, that's kind of one of the differences you'll see, but both products we do have uh, non-medical available. Just a, another side note on non-medical, if you're applying for non-medical uh, underwriting, the best rate class offered is a standard rate class. Uh, we do have preferred, preferred plus rate classes as well in this product. Um, client would need to go through full underwriting to achieve those better rate classes. So I just wanted to uh, set that out here. But uh, as I mentioned before, we're going to touch a little bit on our base product, the Trendsetter Super product first. Um, so as mentioned before, we have kind of a variety of, of durations available. With both of these products, we go down to $25,000 of coverage, which um, is really handy for some smaller case amounts. So we do have a low minimum base. I mentioned it before, we have high issue ages on this product, so um, up to age 80 with that 10-year term, um, really a, a big breadth or, or wide variety of clients that you can really market to. Uh, with the Trendsetter Super, we have a multi-policy discount, so this would be for a client that uh, perhaps wants to kind of uh, step or ladder their coverage. They Maybe they need $500,000 of coverage today, so they get two policies or 250 but later down the line, they expect their coverage needs to be lower. So if, if they split their policy amongst two policies, get two policies for 250, um, they can always stop one of those policies and just immediately be down to their 250 of coverage. Um, you know, doing that makes sense. Uh, often, if uh, if a carrier doesn't offer a multi-policy discount, it, it can kind of be harmful to the client. Uh, we do, so we're basically saying, okay, if you could buy two 250 policies, we're going to consider that 500,000. We're going to make sure you're included in the, that band for $500,000. Uh, we're only going to charge you one policy fee for the both policies. So um, just kind of an, an ease of use and, and ease of business there allows the client to have some flexibility to structure the life insurance that they actually want. So with the uh, Trendsetter Super, we also have an advanced premium option. Uh, sometimes it's referred to as a, as a lump sum payment. So if a client is interested in, in prepaying their term policy, they can do that with a Trendsetter Super. So if they, for example, have a 30-year term policy and they'd like to just pay this policy in full year one, um, we have some factors right in the product guide. We'll, you know, you're basically multiplying the annual premium by one of these factors, and it's going to tell you this X amount is what's going to be needed to prepay the policy up. Um, for that 30 years. So um, just kind of a, a nice tool there for clients looking to, um, get, one, get a discount because they're not going to be paying what they would be paying over 30 years. They're getting a discount for doing that and getting that premium payment done and out of the way. Um, so with Transfer Super, we do have a, a couple different riders there. Waiver premium, pretty standard rider we're seeing in the industry. Uh, we can add a child to the policy as a child rider, also an accidental indemnity rider as well. And in the event of an accident, they would be paid out additional um, death benefits. So um, that's just kind of a quick down of that super product. As I mentioned before, this is kind of our base product. Um, we've been selling this for many years, uh, kind of seen as our, our standard term product there. So kind of uh, switching gears here, going into our Trendsetter LB, a little bit of a newer product. We've still been years, though. Um, the Trendsetter LB, and again, LB stands for Living Benefits. And the idea here is there's some additional benefits. There are accelerated death benefits that are built into the product. And these benefits are inherent in the product. If you're buying a Trendsetter LB, you're getting those benefits built into the product. Uh, so if you're out there on a quoting engine that's showing a bunch of different carriers, you might see the Trendsetter LB is coming up a little more expensive than maybe our Trendsetter Super or, or another vanilla term product out there. Uh, that's because these benefits are already built into the product. There's no rider you have to click to add. Uh, you buy a Trendsetter LB, you're getting these additional benefits that we're going to talk about here in a moment. So the living benefits, as I mentioned, the, the technical term for those are, is an accelerated death benefit. And we're going to talk a little bit about the minimums and maximums of, and how you access these benefits. But in short, the client can access up to $1.5 million of coverage from their policy early through these benefits. And uh, we'll kind of talk about each individual benefit and how it works. Um, there's no additional underwriting for the living benefits. We're using the same exact underwriting um, guide and same uh, uh, look for 
the trends that are LB as we do for the trends that are super products. So you're using the same application. As we mentioned before, there are some spots where you can do non-medical underwriting on the LB at higher coverage amounts. So that would be one difference in underwriting there. Um, but we're, we're using the same questions. We're looking for the same things there. Um, currently available pretty much everywhere. Uh, we have 48 states, Puerto Rico, still waiting on Massachusetts. Um, do not have Guam or New York at the moment for the trendsetter LB. So we've talked, to, I've mentioned it a couple times, uh, living benefits. And, and what are living benefits? So living benefits, again, are the client's ability to access cash from a policy um, for expenses related to chronic critical or terminal illness. And this is all obviously while the client is still alive. So we like to think about this product as you know, not only a, a term product that's covering a client in the event of death, but also in the event that they live and uh, what benefits that they, uh, they can access there. So kind of give you a, an example here. We, we think of this as kind of a puzzle. And there's a, a few different pieces. The first one being chronic illness. And this is sometimes what you think of synonymous with, uh, with disability. Uh, chronic illness. The way to trigger this benefit is a client being unable to perform two of six activities of daily living. And on the screen there, you'll see bathing, continence, dressing, eating, toileting, transferring. Um, those are the activities of daily living. Um, unable to perform two of six of those, that's going to go ahead and uh, can trigger that benefit. Another trigger under the chronic illness would be a severe cognitive impairment. Um, so things like Alzheimer's there is, is you know, kind of the standard thing that you think about. So severe cognitive impairment can trigger that as well. That's one way to trigger the benefit. Another way to trigger the benefit would be our critical illness accelerated death benefit. And this is what you want to think about as really more one-time specific and acute illnesses, things like heart attack, stroke, cancer. And the list goes on there. And this is not comprehensive. The contract lists out other things as well. Um, but you know, heart attack, stroke, cancer, those are kind of the big ones that we think about. This is really intended to be a, a really a one-time um, pool of death benefit out of the policy. I, I should have mentioned before the chronic illness is really for disability something that we're going to expect to last longer over time. You can, you're pulling out money. Critical illness is kind of that one-time acute event. Third piece of the puzzle is going to be our terminal illness rider. And terminal illness is uh, pretty ubiquitous uh, amongst most carriers. Uh, uh, mo many products, even our own Trendsetter Super, includes a terminal illness benefit built into it. Um, we define it as a uh, I'm unable to form two of six activities, excuse me, uh, terminal illness, I'm sorry, is uh, 12 months or less to live. So a client has a uh, diagnosis of terminally ill, generally defined as 12 months or less to live in most states. Um, they can trigger that benefit. And uh, for most states, you can trigger up to 100% of the death benefit taken out early. So really, the last piece of the puzzle is the one that we know about term insurance is the death benefit protection as well. So we're adding chronic illness, critical illness, terminal illness, together with the death benefit protection of the product. And you're putting that all together, and really that equals one solution. Um, that puzzle kind of comes together in what we have as the trends that are living benefit products. So next slide here is kind of give you a, a, an example of you know when you do trigger the benefit, what does that mean? What is the client accessing? So we're going to start at the top here with the chronic illness. So the chronic illness, again, two of six activity li activities of daily living. Um, and also severe cognitive impairment can be a trigger. So the client uh, has those issues. They do trigger the benefit. What can they pull out of the policy? So we, we use the term acceleration. This is a, an accelerated death benefit. For the chronic illness, you can accelerate up to 24% per year. And again, chronic illness we're expecting is probably something that the client's going to have for an extended period of time. So the client can keep on pulling out money. So 24% per year. Over the life of the policy, the maximum they can pull out is either going to be 90% of that face amount or $1.5 million, whichever is less. Remember, we can write these policies up to $2 million. Um, so that $1.5 million could come into play there. But if you're writing a policy for a lesser amount, let's say you have a, a, a million dollars of coverage, 90% would be obviously $900,000. Um, you could do 24% per year. So it would take you three and, a, three and some change years to really get through and get out your maximum benefit. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about what acceleration means and what the actual benefit a client receives. We're going to uh, talk about that in another slide or two. But uh, for our purposes right now, what they're pulling out, what they're accelerating, what they're reducing their death benefit by 24% per year is what we can do on the chronic illness. 
So moving down to the kind of center section here, the critical illness, and again, these are those one-time acute illnesses, stroke, cancer, heart attack. Um, we can really go in and pull out more of a, a lump sum one-time amount. So um, instead of being per year, they have an option when they have any of these issues, they have kind of a one-time option to pull up to 90% of the face amount. Again, they're going to be limited um, by the 1.5 million as well. And lastly, terminal illness, uh, 12 months or less to live. They can accelerate up to 100% of the face amount typically. And again, this is a good time to mention that there are states with different variations. Some states um, that 100% might be 90%. For example, uh, some states, my state here in Florida, on the critical illness, uh, the 90% is actually 100% on the critical illness. So um, there's some spots in states where it's, it's more advantageous. So just to let you know that um, the states that we make it available, there might be some slight variations. We do have marketing pieces that kind of go into that. But again, uh, terminal illness, kind of what we see it, with a lot of carriers and, and ourselves, 12 months or less to live up to 100% uh, acceleration there. And again, they are limited by a $1.5 million cap. Uh, one note about that $1.5 million cap, that is $1.5 million amongst all benefits, amongst all policies they have. So just kind of give you a hypothetical. If they were to have a chronic illness and over some time took out a $1 million uh, under the chronic illness rider, later they had a critical illness and they took out $5,000, um, they would have hit their $1.5 million cap. If, if later that same client has a terminal illness, They've already hit their cap at 1.5. They've already pulled out as much as they possibly can from the policy, um, so they wouldn't have access to the terminal illness. So I just want to kind of illustrate for you the 1.5 million is really amongst all the different benefits, and even if they have different policies as well, 1.5 million is going to be the total cap. So we're going to go through just kind of a, a one singular example of unit using one of these benefits. We're going to use the critical illness benefit. Um, so again, on the screen here, we've kind of got our our generic client here, Dale, he's 40 years old, uh, preferred non-smoker, and uh, he has bought a $500,000 trendsetter LB policy, a 30-year policy, a, a few years back. So we're going to kind of go through a scenario here. We're going to assume uh, Dale suffers a serious heart attack at age 45. So he's five years into the policy. Um, so it's a little bit in the future. He's uh, assuming that um, he has a serious heart attack. What's going to happen, obviously, after Dale is, uh, has stabilized, um, he's going to contact the insurance company and, and inquire about accessing funds from his policy under the critical illness accelerated death benefit. So Transamerica is going to send some information out to his doctors and paperwork for them to fill out, and we're going to take that information and we're going to review. What we're basically looking for is we're kind of judging the severity of, il of his illness. And the way we do that is really determining um, how Dale's life expectancy has been affected. So for our example here, serious heart attack, we're assuming Dale's life expectancy in this example is now estimated to be about 10 and a half years. So Dale's going to say, okay, he's interested in electing 90% of his death benefit. Remember with the critical illness, 90% is the maximum you can accelerate out of the policy. Um, so the next slide, we're going to talk a little bit about what that means. We're accelerating 90% of 500,000. So that number, that's 450,000 is the amount of death benefit that's coming out of the policy. What the client receives as a benefit is going to be different, and that's what we're going to talk about next here. So again, just to recap, uh, Dale had a policy. He had the policy for about five years. He paid a total premium in about four and a, or $4,542. So uh, about $4,500 there he's paid in in premium. Um, he's gone through the paperwork. He's uh, suggested to Transamerica he's interested in taking 90% out of an accelerated death benefit. So Transamerica is going to look at that information, going to base it on the life expectancy, the severity calculation there, and they're going to make an offer to, to Dale. That offer in this case is just under $300,000, $298,066 is what's being offered as a single lump sum tax-free benefit to Dale. So let's kind of get into this. One, you know, we accelerated, we had $500,000, we accelerated 90%, that's four fifty. So we have $50,000 remaining as a death benefit. So his death benefit is now $50,000. If he were to pass away at this point, and he were to do this and pass away at this point, his heirs would receive that $50,000 death benefit. Um, the premium he would pay on the policy would be based on that $50,000 of coverage. So that's going to lower down. But you know, the questions that we always get and kind of uh, what we need to explain to our clients is, 
what is the benefit that Dale would receive? And just under three hundred thousand dollars down from that four hundred fifty thousand dollars. And so let's kind of talk about what's going on here. This benefit, the critical illness accelerated death benefit, and all these benefits are truly death benefits. They are not long-term care benefits. Uh, in terms of tax guidelines, they fall under a death benefit. And why that's important for Dale is he can receive money out of his policy on a tax-preferred basis, on a tax-free basis, because it is considered life insurance death benefit. If this was some type of long-term care rider, you'd be governed under the tax rules there. So there is always going to be a, a, a calculation done and the calculation that's done, why we're at 300000 is what we call it, it's a present value of future benefit. That's kind of the technical lingo. And what we're basically saying is, how much is $450,000 10 years from now worth today? And then remember, that 10 years came from his life expectancy. Um, if you know, We're expecting that we're going to be paying out $450,000 10 years from now. If he were to have that money today, how much would that be worth? Um, so what is the present value of that future benefit? And it's pretty straightforward how Transamerica does it. Transamerica in the contract says that we're going to use a discounting factor, and that discounting factor is a percentage. And we're basically going to uh, use a percentage that's based on industry standards. And right in the contract, it says we're going to use the percentage, whatever is higher, either the current Treasury bill rate or we're going to use the Moody corporate bond rate at the time. And I can tell you right now, I've looked at them, the Moody corporate bond rate is higher. It's hovering right around 4% right now. So in short, we're basically looking at $450,000. We're discounting it by about a 4% annual return, and we're making an offer to Dale of just under $300,000. So really what Dale needs to think about is, you know, does he need that $300,000 today? If that's, you know, that $300,000 is going to um, help him keep a roof over his head, help him pay the bills. He's obviously gone through a, a pretty serious uh, medical condition here. Um, that $300,000 could certainly be the, the difference between um, his family financially staying secure or not. So that's an option to him, $300,000. If he would prefer that this stay as death benefit, he can take less than 90%. He can elect not to elect the, uh, the benefit at all. If he says, no, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm comfortable financially where, where we're at right now. We don't want to go in and reduce our death benefit. And we can keep that, that $500,000 where it's at as well. So, Really, when we're talking about accelerated death benefits, we're talking about giving the client flexibility, especially flexibility when they're uh, possibly in a pretty vulnerable state in terms of medical conditions. So um, just want to kind of run through that example. Um, when you're running a quote, if you're using Transamerica software, for most states, when you run a quote, it will give you some examples. It will say, um, assuming you know, 10 years from now we, we trigger the chronic, critical, or terminal illness. This is kind of what the expected benefits are and gives you some examples of the different severities. Um, because if the life expectancy is longer, the difference in, in what you take out and what you receive is going to be bigger. The life expectancy is shorter, meaning it's more severe. Um, that gap is going to, to narrow. So um, I know a, a lot of information I threw at you there, but just want to give you a sense of how these accelerated benefits work. One, um, really, the key behind these benefits is they're tax free. They're truly death benefit coverage. You're not required to be long-term care licensed or anything like that to sell. As long as you can sell term in your state, you can sell the Trendsetter LB. And the reason being is because we've built these products to be death benefits. So that's all we're going to talk about in terms of the technical aspect of how to actually access the benefits. But uh, one thing I do want to mention, because we always get uh, questions on is, you know, what's, what's the difference in price in, in terms of our Trendsetter LB and our Trendsetter regular super product or really any, any other vanilla product out there. Um, on the screen here, just kind of a quick example. On the left-hand side is actually representing our Trendsetter super. Um, it does have that terminal illness death benefit. does have a regular death benefit built in there. And this example, this is a male, kind of generic male, age 35, 30-year term, 750,000 death benefit, preferred non-smoker. Um, on the left-hand side, $68.37. That's represented as a monthly premium. If we're looking in the center, our Trendsetter LB, we're getting those additional benefits, our chronic uh, and critical illness death benefit built in there. Uh, and the difference is about $9.68 a month. So pretty minimal difference, um, especially considering the additional benefits you're building in there. Um, the next slide is a similar slide, just using female rates, 35-year-old, um, 30 30-year 30 term, uh, $750,000 as well. Again, a uh, price difference on, on the female rates, 
even better there, about $7.74. So we do see a pretty minimal price difference when clients kind of understand the flexibility that they're, they're getting built into this product. Um, it gives them kind of a, a good idea of, of uh, you know, where that extra money is going and uh, gives them some options there. So that's really, uh, you know, the specific detail we're going to talk about the Trendsetter LB. We have, do have a lot of great resources on the Trendsetter LB. If you're already appointed with Transamerica, you have access to our agentnetinfo.com website. Again, that was agentnetinfo.com. Um, that's your agent portal, has all these uh, great marketing pieces. Um, we do have a great piece that if you're interested in this product, I would suggest on our, our site. It's called the Trendsetter LB Frequently Asked Questions piece. And this is actually a consumer-facing piece. So if you are working with a client or, or talking about this with a client, um, this is a piece you can put right in front of them. And it goes through uh, question and answer scenarios, goes through a couple different examples, kind of like we talked about with Dale. Um, it's really a great piece, very informative. So that's one thing. If you're looking for more information, that's one thing I'd point out to uh, take a peek at. So again, lots of different uh, marketing pieces and also informational pieces that we do offer. Our, our website's typically the best spot to find that. Um, we can quote our products, both the Super and the LB, both in Transamerica software. We're out there on most of the third-party quoting engines, if you use any of those. Um, we also have a, uh, a Transamerica iPad app. So if you're using the iPad, go to the App Store, search for Transamerica Life Sales, and you'll find our quick calculator there to kind of quickly do quotes as well. So a couple different spots where you can actually access quotes. All right, so that's the last we're going to talk about our term process. Uh, just for one more minute here, I'm going to give you uh, one other piece of information on different, um, really an underwriting program that we have that you can use with our term products. And we call that Transamerica's top program. It's, uh, top stands for Transamerica Opportunity Program. And just a short, quick uh, commercial on this is if you have a client that has been previously underwritten with another carrier or Transamerica, um, we want to take a look at that client. If you send it an application to us under the top program, we're going to basically just look at the medical questions that are on the application, but we're not going to do a full underwriting. And we're going to look to basically match what another carrier offered. So if they got a preferred rate class at Carrier XYZ last year, they could come over to Transamerica, put an application in, um, and if it's been only a year, you can do up to a million dollars of additional coverage. So let's say they only had 250 at the other company um, within the last year, come over to Transamerica, we're looking to match that preferred offer and give you a million dollars. So it's basically doing non-medical for higher coverage amounts. It's intended to be an accelerated underwriting program, not doing any of those uh, lab works. And uh, the client would have previously had to have been underwritten at a previous point in time. The great you know, real uh, feature of this program is you can have a client that has kind of one of those vanilla term products that you know everyone's been using. You can get them into a trendsetter LB. So because we use the same underwriting guidelines for both products, if you have a client that wants to go from a regular standard term and get into a trendsetter LB with those additional benefits, they can do that under the top program um, pretty easily. So the chart here, this is kind of give you an idea. Depending on how long it's been since they've been underwriting, within the last year, we can go up to a million dollars. It's been within the last three years, 750. Last five years, $500,000. Um, really, the if you're looking to do one of these under the top program, what you're going to be doing is, is the normal application. You're going to be filling out the medical questions. It's not a guaranteed issue. Uh, underwriting is going to look at the application. If something major has changed you know, since they've been underwritten last, um, they're going to consider that. But it's intended for them, if they've had no big major medical changes, for us to be able to take that previous underwriting and match that rate class over and offer them a new coverage, possibly even more coverage than they had before. Um, so they're going to send an application, they're going to indicate that they want to do the top program. And then kind of the, the linchpin to this is they do ask that you provide the policy data page of the other policy. So if it was with another carrier, and we have over 60 different carriers that are approved under the top program, and they're really all the major carriers you'd expect, um, you're going to have them send in the, the data page of the policy that they've been issued, and that would show how much coverage they got and how, uh, how long it's been since the, they've uh, been underwritten. Um, so that's kind of the process for doing top. Um, and kind of one of the cool things about top is we don't really care if the policy is still in force. If they got a policy five years ago at another carrier and for whatever reason they let that policy lapse, we just care that the policy was issued and they went through underwriting at the time. Um, so if they still have a copy of their policy page, um, that would suffice for them to uh, go and use for our top program. So just wanted to uh, 
mention that it kind of fits well with our term products. It is used to get them from one term to another term product. So we're going to go ahead and wrap up there. And I'm going to swing it back to Mark to see if he'd like to uh, mention anything else I may have missed there. Hey, again, thank you very much, Doug. Um, just to make sure, right there at the end when you were talking about that program, did you sure. say that even if they had a policy that they, let's say they wrote it a year or two years ago, paid on it for 15 months, but it lapsed, it would still qualify? It absolutely would. What we're concerned about is that they went through underwriting and were offered a policy. We actually have had scenarios where clients went through underwriting on another company and they were issued or had policy pages go out to them, but for whatever reason, they didn't take the policy out. So they never even had the policy enforced. The fact that they got issued the policy and, and had policy pages showing that they um, were made an offer is all we really uh, required. So it's not intended to be a replacement program. If they have a, a term policy and they want to get additional coverage, that's fine with us. It's not, you don't have to replace an old policy. It's just the fact that they've been through underwriting. So yeah, great, great uh, spot to point out. Yeah, and for you as agents, obviously, you just need to go back now if you have a book of business and think about the clients that you work so hard on and maybe for some reason or another didn't take the offer that you had put to them. Uh, or, again, they started paying on it uh, and they dropped it. They lapsed because they stopped making those payments. Those might be the first clients that you want to go right back to. Uh, let's see here. Another thing that I noted, I've always been aware that we had the benefit of a under 100,000 non-med on the super, but I must admit that this is the first time I became aware that we could do just under the 250,000 for that uh, trendsetter with the living benefits. So that was definitely a high note for me, and I thank you for that as well. And also, I think also we all need to bear in mind that if that client happens to be up a little bit in years and they've, they've touched over that 61 uh, that they still have to be fully underwritten. So this really wouldn't be for that client. It's really going to be for others under 60, 60 and under. Correct on that, Doug? Absolutely. Good good spot to point out there. Okay, good. Um, and again, on the uh, multi-policy discount, you're going to see that in other carriers as well. Uh, but the fact that if you do laddering, and maybe it's not just that you split 500, but maybe you laddered a 20-year and a 10-year. Uh, the fact that the amount, dollar amount is still going to get you the 500 banded price and only cost you one policy fee is also an additional savings to your client. So I think that's great. Uh, and then explaining to us, and you did a very thorough job on the accelerated benefit uh, when it is exercised on any of these conditions that there are going to be necessary steps to look at. I think I missed a note, though, when we're talking about what were the two? We have the Moody's bond, and what was the other one? Yeah, the, in the contract, it lists out the, the industry indexes that we use for that discounting factor. It's the, the current treasury bill, the 90-day treasury bill rate, which uh, if, if you ever track any of that stuff right now is pretty darn low. Um, and the other one is the Moody corporate bond rate. So really for, for today, an example today, it would be that Moody corporate bond rate. Right now hovering, around, I believe, around 4.1% um, is that discount factor so that you'd be using there. And that's very fair, ladies and gentlemen, because in the normal operations of financing, when the bonds are up, the treasuries are down. So I would think it would take effect the other way when the treasuries go up. You're going to look at that factor versus the bonds that went down. Correct? You got it right. Okay, good, good. Um, and also I thought it was interesting when you were talking about the illustration software. Uh, I'm going to go back in there and run a couple more myself to see because I've never noticed that I'm going to be able to see actual examples based on the case that I'm using of what these benefit payouts might be. So I, th I think that's a nice little extra as you're sitting down at the table and presenting these uh, products to your clients that you're going to have at your advantage. And there's one piece I'd like to mention on that, Mark. Uh, I, I should put the caveat there. The vast majority of states will show examples. There are a couple of states that, for whatever reason, their regulations don't allow 
accelerated benefits to be uh, illustrated. My state is one of them. I'm, I'm based here in Florida. If you were to run a trendsetter LB quote, you're not going to see the examples on there. If I were to switch my software to, say, Georgia, I would see the examples on there. Most states will see it, but if you're not seeing it on your software, I, that just may be the, uh, the issue there. I just want to make, make you aware of that. Thank you. That's very important. Also, also, for all of us, the fact that this is one of the products that you do not need to have your long-term care license or have that certification uh, completed to do partnership, that you're still going to have a long-term care type of benefit available to, their, to your clients. So makes it easier for you as an agent to go ahead and do more business. Uh, definitely using the agentnetinfo.com after you become a licensed agent through Transamerica. Uh, please do use our website where you're going to be able to go over to our agent resources tab from the Messer homepage. The first drop down box is online contracting. It's going to be very simple for you to get that process going and get that contract in force. And also while you're on our website, drop down a few more lines and pick up your E&O if you don't have any. You'll find that we are one of the, if not the most competitive E&O product out there for agents. Uh, and most importantly, it's an E&O product that's individually written so you're not pooled with a number of other agents who you don't know, who might not be doing their business in a proper manner, who might be called on the table, and who might use up the pool of money before you get it if you have a need. So that's very important to know about your E&O. Always make sure that it's an individual, not a group product policy. Uh, let's see what else we've got here. A um, couple of questions. And this is from Dennis. Uh, does the multi-policy discount apply if they have one LB and one super? It does not. It has to be one product specifically. So they, they would need to have two supers for that multi-policy discount to apply. Okay. Good question, though, Dennis. Thank you. Yep. Uh, and then a second question coming in from Richard. Is the top program available on both the super and on the super LB policy? It sure is, and that's a great question and really a great feature because we have built the underwriting the same for both products. You can have a client that just has a traditional vanilla term product using the top program, getting them into a trendsetter LB. So not only are you offering them a product that presumably they'll be able to get without as much underwriting, they can just kind of do a non-med underwriting, get that accelerated underwriting done. You can offer them a product that really has more benefit as well with the the LB living benefits in there. So great question. Absolutely it does. Yes, thank you, Richard. And, and let me go one step further. Uh, thinking of one carrier that may not be in business today or has suspended business on life insurance, if you have uh, policies written under that carrier, perhaps this is the way to go because you are going to enhance the benefits to those clients that you've already had a familiar base with and Actually, you get the benefit, I would assume, of a commission paid again after you've been paid once. Just be careful you don't write it too soon before you fulfill the necessary obligations for chargeback from the previous carrier. That would be one thing. Uh, but number two, Doug, is it possible then, uh, for ex example, one of the trendsetter supers that I wrote two years ago, I can come back and put them into a super? Absolutely. So yes, if you had a, a super before getting them into an LB, absolutely. So the top program does work with Transamerica policies as well, and we make it a little bit easier. You don't need to provide any sort of policy data page. We can obviously look it up on our own, but absolutely. We see a lot of, uh, of agents reviewing their own policies, their own trendsetter policies, super policies that they've done previously, and, and getting their clients into that LB product. I would just be... Uh cognitive of the fact that I don't have a commissionary structure to know how that would work. Uh, just to, I think I would probably have to talk to commissions and make sure that in that example, if it was a two-year-old policy being rewritten, would they be paid a full new commission or would they only be paid on an upgrade? And I would always suggest touching base with commissions before doing that. Uh, typically, if it's a policy that you're replacing uh, with 
within Transamerica considered an internal replacement, uh, which product to product can be a little bit different, but generally it can be anywhere from five to ten years. If you're, you're replacing a policy within Transamerica with another Transamerica policy, usually five to ten years, um, there will be some sort of commission adjustment. Um, it could be a, as much as you're just getting paid on the additional premium of that new policy. Um, but again, those are sometimes case-by-case -case basis um, and something I would certainly talk with uh, commissions about before doing. And of course, the benefit there is if it's from another carrier, that doesn't even enter into the equation, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely. Uh, and also, just from my point of interest to say, uh, for the many, many years that I've worked with Transamerica, I have to say uh, they really are the most agent-friendly company that I've ever worked with. Their uh, agent that info site, once you get appointed, is very easy to, to work around and work through. And anytime you pick up the phone and call them uh, during the week, Monday through Thursday primarily, because Friday they kind of switch gears and start working heavily on the underwriting process and getting policies issued. But during the week, you can call them, have questions, and they're right there to help you. I don't think anything's changed on that. And if it has, I'm certainly not aware of it from my contacts. So thank you again on that, too, Doug. Thank you for saying that, Mark. And I don't see any other questions, so I guess the last thing I need to bring to your attention uh, because you're registered on the webinar today, because we have your name posted, if you will bring us a new Transamerica life case, uh, doesn't matter whether it's a super or whether it's the LB, uh, send that in here in the next 30 days, so you got until June 25th, and we'll get that processed and get it through the system, and when the policy is issued within 60 days, uh, Messer Financial will add $100 bonus commission onto the regular commission that you'll receive for that product. Uh, looks like one more question did pop up in here from Ben. How long will it take to qualify for the chronic or the critical benefit? So, I mean, in terms of, uh, it depends on what they're asking here. So, in terms of how long it will take to qualify, um, their question may be related to waiting period. So, for example, um, the cr uh, critical illness, that one-time acute illness, um, it's a 30-day period from the, the uh, actually, excuse me, you have to have the policy in force for 30 days okay. before you can qualify for the benefit. Uh, once they have the issue, it's just a matter of sending the paperwork in, um, it, it, you know, just depending on how long it takes for a doctor to get the information back to us. So, there's no specific time period there. but I believe the question is probably referring to how long do you have to have the policy? Is there a waiting period before you can access the benefit? For critical illness, it's a 30-day waiting period, so you need to have the policy at least 30 days. For the chronic illness, it is a longer period. It's a two-year waiting period. So you have to have the policy in force for two years before um, turning on that chronic illness benefit. And remember, chronic illness is really what we associate with disability, two of six activities of daily living. Excellent. Thank you very much. And good question, Ben. Thank you yep. also. Great, great question. Uh, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you again next Thursday. Present another carrier's products, and hopefully you've seen the sweet spot here and the opportunity for you to reinforce some business maybe on the books, but to enhance your business now with the new life insurance versus the old life insurance living benefits. Doug, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Mark.